this video I'm going to share with you two fairly explicit and clear examples that really illustrate and demonstrate just exactly how we've been majorly conditioned to think in extremely limited ways, thus vastly and profoundly limiting our experience as human beings and undermining our ability to actually listen, to actually be present, to actually experience our life as the way it actually is, and to really be human. And the first example of this is that we think that our ideas and our models and our paradigms about the world are actually describing the world completely and or we think that's how the world actually is. We could sum that up in a, in a simple statement from General Semantics and Alfred Korzybski who said that map is not the territory and that modern humans spend their lives eating the menu instead of the meal meaning that we have we have an experience of a thing so right here I have some tea and typically what we do as modern humans is instead of seeing this tea for what it really is and seeing it um, more honestly and authentically we instead are so conditioned through marketing and media and religion and science that instead of seeing it what goes off is a whole trigger and cascade of uh, basically triggers i.e. slogans and mantras and ideas and assumptions and biases and things that we've been basically drilled into us uh, from the phys from this conditioning so we might we might say oh well this is a you know this is an oolong tea and then a lot of people oh i know what i know what an oolong is you know I know all about oolong. I read this book. I had oolong a couple of times. I know exactly what oolong is. But the beauty of tea is that it's so massively unique that this slightest variation of a thing can produce something so drastically different. The, the issue is that if we are so stupid and so deeply embedded in our ignorance through obsession with our past experience and obsession and fixation on our cultural conditioning, and we're not really actually going to take the time. We're not going to have the presence or the awareness or the capacity or the insight to really see and be with that thing in the moment and say, wow, this is actually this whole other thing. To be able to appreciate the nuance, which we could see that as being more actually honest, more actually present, and more actually authentic. So that's kind of the first aspect is we think our ideas of whatever isms we believe in, whatever isms we subscribe to, whatever systems we identify with and systems that we believe will give us something or deliver us to something. We think that's actually what the world is. We think that's actually how the world experiences. Thus, we are unable to actually experience the world. <laughs> and this really limits us because we can't check in and see, well, is, is this description of the world actually matching up with my experience as a human being of the world. I Meaning maybe we'll get really deep into chemistry, right? Or anatomy. But then does that really describe our experience as human beings? Uh, and I'm not really going to go further than that just because I don't, it's just, it's going to get really unrelatable. Uh, so we'll just leave it at that. And these are just questions <laughs> And things to ponder. And the second example is that uh, if I were to say to you something like, you know, I think God is just an artificial construct uh, put together by uh, power structures to basically sort out people's daddy issues and or fill in all of these psychological holes. If I were to say that, whether I do or do not really feel that way, a lot of people are going to be immediately offended because they believe and have been conditioned to the opposite which that you know those things are true and it's not just that and it's not merely that yet there's another camp who is going to probably through their anger or dis sense of being disenfranchised or sense of being you know critical and upset are going to really identify with that because they think oh well he must be an atheist so 
both people, both responses, either the theist or the atheist, both people feel that they are correct. They are somehow superior or advanced or more intelligent or more insightful or more spiritual or more scientific or pragmatic or they're going to be saved. You believe all of these things based on uh, this construct with its two sides of the same coin. And both fail to realize the limitations of viewing life in that way. Because that's just one example, and I perhaps use the most emotionally charged example. Yet another thing is, I could say, oh, I hate Coca-Cola. People, oh, you must like Pepsi or Mountain Dew. Uh, or, you know, McDonald's sucks. Oh, you must like Burger King or In-N-Out Burger. Or if I say, oh, well, you know, I don't really believe in evolution. And everyone's like, oh, well, you must believe in creationism. Oh, I don't really believe in the Big Bang. Oh, you must believe in creationism as well. Uh, and this is just a very small level of awareness that we are operating on. And we don't see how it actually keeps us in prison. It actually keeps us really stupid, really ignorant, really limited in what we can do in our lives and how we can relate to ourselves and other people. Because basically we've been dealt two shitty cards and we think that's how we have to view the world and we think that's all that there is. But in actuality and reality, there's so much beyond these two things. <laughs> this false dialectic or this dualistic way of seeing the world. So much experience to be had. So many other ways of seeing the world. And this is one thing that really irks me and this tends to really be one of my pet peeves is that we're given this you know, artificial construct about seeing the world and then mar meaning you know, um, basically creationism or evolution, theism or atheism. Uh, or in the middle, intelligent design, where it's like kind of evolution, but it's also kind of this, kind of that. This is, this is the point I'm trying to make, and uh, eventually will make, is that what annoys me is that, uh, let's say someone starts studying Chinese medicine, you know, or they start studying alternative medicine, but they don't actually get in touch with the fact that they are studying, viewing, and practicing this alternative medicine within and based on the identical conditioned paradigms and conditioned um, ways of seeing the world as the thing they're trying to be an alternative to. So it's not actually an alternative. It's an alternative in the way that Burger King is an alternative to McDonald's or Pepsi is an alternative to Coke. Not really alternatives. They're still both garbage. <laughs> they're both, still both generally not fit for human consumption. But the fact is we're not able to step outside of that even for a few moments and realize like oh yeah uh that's really like not a thing and i'm actually doing an alternative thing because the constructs that i'm describing here are salvational hierarchical obviously mechanical um obviously dogmatic and so many other things and then we are doing the alternatives in those identical ways and viewing the body in the same way, thinking the body is uh, basically some kind of machine with like a soul attached to it somehow, or like electricity running through it, and that's what the what our experience is. And that's also the thing is no one has ever actually taken the time to say, "Hey, well, what do I really think I am?" Because it sounds like a really basic question, and it is, and it's also drastically important. Because whatever we're doing is reflecting that belief system. And you can even listen to it in the languaging that people will use. And I'll even talk to people who are atheists or agnostics or, you know, strictly philosophical scientific people. And they still speak and feel and believe and act in the, in the world within the same logical and psychological constructs as the person who's a dogmatic fundamentalist religious person but they don't see it because they're too busy telling themselves oh well i have science and i have my philosophy and i have this and i am these things so it means this and then the fundamentalist just tells oh well those people you know they're so limited 
they're all going to go to hell. They haven't been saved. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're missing. You know, I'm in the in group. I've seen the way, the truth, and the light. I am these things, and everyone else is shit. And you can fill in the blank with whether you're a yoga person, uh, whether you're a fucking paleo person, or a vegan, or vegetarian, whatever dogma we are adopting, we're never actually realizing that we're still operating within the same basic assumptions that we started with in the beginning that we are trying to get away from from the start, the very things that are cause, causing our suffering. So basically what we are setting up for ourselves is the thing which is causing our suffering in the first place, we're not ever actually looking at, addressing, getting in touch with. We are just trying to rearrange it under new umbrellas, believing that it's going to deliver us or give us something or whatever. <laughs> so that doesn't really make any sense. However, it does make sense in the fact that we all learn at different rates, different speeds. We all have different lessons and experiences that we need to go through. And some people learn quick, some people learn slow, some people don't want to learn, some people don't give a shit at all. <laughs> so we can't, we don't really know what it should or ought to be. It's just kind of, we can see what we can see. We can see principles and dynamics and trends. But past a certain point, we have to be comfortable with I don't know. We have to be comfortable with, I'm just approximating, but I'm not actually getting to the thing. So anyways, hopefully this has been helpful um, and shed some insight. It's definitely something to reflect upon and observe yourself uh, because this is a really a common thing in, in the world, <laughs> on the planet right now, uh, just the, the way in which we've been really conditioned to see ourselves and see each other and subsequently uh, this really keeps us from actually having a human experience and actually having fulfillment and enjoyment and uh, connecting authentically and honestly with ourselves and other people. So it has been helpful and I'll talk to you soon.